In this video, I'm going to show you how you can identify the tissue and then how you can segment the nuclei in the tissue. So when you want to do that, you can use annotation tools. And for example, here, the, the magic one might be a good idea. If you zoom quite a lot, you see you can actually pretty well identify the tissue. But um, I'm not going to do it that way, actually, I'm going to use the thresholding tool. So I'm going to remove the annotation and I'm going to use the, the thresholding tool so you can um, use it. It's actually uh, defined as pixel classification. So if I go to classify and then pixel classification, I can create a thresholder. And so uh, here, you can use a different resolution. So as we want to identify the tissue, probably to take a very low resolution, it's going to be uh, the best option. You can use one or you can uh, average the channels. So here probably is going to be a uh, best solution or I can I could just look at the DAPI. Then we can uh, apply a um, Gaussian filtering probably. So it's a smoothing. So it's probably a Gaussian filter. So we'll, we'll try this and then you have a threshold and you can define uh, tissue above and below the threshold. So I'm going to first define a new class for a tissue, for example. And here everything that's going to be above the threshold is going to be part of the tissue. So I'm going to change this and I can uh, change uh, the value and see uh, what it gives. And now if I use this option, this icon, I can uh, toggle with or without. And so here clearly the, the threshold is not high enough. So here 1000 is probably too high. So let's say 700, for example, looks uh, pretty good. Uh, maybe, so we're missing some tissue here, so maybe I can increase the smoothing. And so we see that we have, when we increase the smoothing, we have more regular uh, regions, but definitely I'm uh, still missing those regions, so I'm going to need to uh, decrease the threshold, sorry. If I increase, it's not going to go the right way. So if I decrease it to 500, this actually look looks pretty good. So I can actually define a, a classifier name. It's going to call it a tissue classifier, for example. save it and now I can uh, remove this and now I can actually apply it if I go to classify pixel classification I can do load pixel classifier and I now have tissue classifier here and I can create objects on the full image and then I can even um, uh, define the minimum object size or a minimum hole size so I can fill the holes, for example. So here it seems that it's, it works properly, so I won't change that. I just create an annotation which corresponds to my tissue. And as you can see here, looks pretty good. So we, we have uh, regions in the background, like in here. If I want to see exactly, I can go to View and Fill Annotation or Shift M, Shift F, so we can uh, make sure that this is part of the tissue, this is, isn't. But I would say that overall it's pretty good. I can, so if I do Shift F, I'm going to remove that. We just, we can see, for example, that here there was a problem at the, at the acquisition and probably I want to uh, remove this part. How can I do that? Uh, I can uh, alter my annotation if I want to do that, I, I'm going to have to first unlock. If I want to modify it, if I unlock it, now I can change it so I can use either the brush here or the wand here, magic wand. I'm going to use the brush here. 
So the brush uh, depends on the on the resolution we are we are at. And now I can use the Alt key to alter uh, the annotation. So if I push Alt and then I I um, I'm gonna draw the annotation. I'm gonna remove this part. Like this. So now here, uh, it's, it might be hard to know which which uh, which region is part of the annotation. But again, I can do uh, Shift and F, and now I can see that this region is part of the annotation. This isn't, and so uh, that might be you know a good idea to remove regions uh, that uh, might perturb the analysis. So this when you when you have the move uh, key and you move the annotation, it moves the annotation, but I, if I do Control Z, yes, that works. That worked, I can go back and, and uh, select the annotation by double-clicking the annotation. If I want to unselect it, I can double-click outside. I also know that, um, where is it, uh, there's, if I, so I'm just gonna, uh, look at the DAPI because I remember here yes here you can see this is an acquisition artifact as well so uh, if I want I can get rid of it as well so I'm gonna select the annotation if I hit shift F I'm gonna remove it and then I'm gonna use again the brush and Alt key, and I'm going to remove this part. So if I don't remove it, I'm going to uh, detect nuclei here that do not correspond to nuclei. So I could also try to be much more precise on, on the contours, just remove this part and not this, because these nuclei are going to be excluded from the analysis. If I want to make sure that I remove this region, I can Shift F again, and I can see that I have everything else but this. And so uh, I can uh, go back to here, go back to my markers, and uh, hit Shift F again, Up, like this. And, and let's say now I'm happy, so I'm going to uh, segment my nuclei now. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, actually create a folder so we can use the model and you don't have to worry about where to put the model. So let me show you. I'm going to reduce this. Here is my download folder. So I downloaded the data here. I also downloaded those two scripts, so QPath script. This is the extension, so we don't need it, don't need it anymore. And this is the model. To make sure that this is going to work smoothly, I'm going to go into my project and I'm going to create a new folder that I'm, I'm going to uh, call script like this. In script, I'm going to put, so the first script import cytomap, I could put it anywhere else, but won't matter. But what really Im is important is to have a nucleus detection flow and the stardist model in the script folder. So then it's gonna uh, work smoothly. And so if you ever want to use the same model, you c as long as you define a script folder and in this script you put the nucleus detection through Groovy, so the, the script and the model, that will work. Now I'm gonna go back to my, uh, to QPath. I'm gonna open a script editor, so I'm gonna just have the DAPI because that's what we're going to uh, work on. And so I'm going to uh, open the script editor. So with a new version, you can do it here. I'm going to open. Uh, so in my, um, if I go back to my project, I'm going to go into the script. I'm going to open nucleus detection through Groovy. And, and this is what we have. So what I'm going to do is first I'm gonna work with the parameters to make sure that I have something that that uh, that makes sense. So I'm gonna unselect this um, 
this annotation. I'm going to define a new annotation. And as you can see here, um, in the tumor, it's very bright, very dense. So maybe it's a good idea to take an annota um, annotation that includes part of a tumor and part out of a tumor to see how it works. I'm going to put, uh, so I'm going to go through the different parameters quickly. This is a, uh, a parameter to filter out the small nuclei. I'm going to put it to zero first so I can uh, have an idea about what's the best parameter for the minimum area for nuclei. Here we have all the pre-processing, the normalization. That's the normalization I used to train the model. I suggest you keep these parameters. It makes more sense. I include the probability, so we'll have uh, the possibility to look at the different probabilities and, and see what seems to be the best uh, parameter. So I'm going to put a, a low threshold. And then I see what's the best parameter. Pixel size, I'm going to keep it as is. This, it's not. So here, for channels, we need to define the DAPI channel. So either I use the, the number. In that case, if I go back here, DAPI is channel 4. So I don't put 4 because it starts as 0, unfortunately. So 0 would be FOXP3, 1 CD4, 2 CD8. And if I want to put DAPI, I need to put 3 or I can put DAPI. That should work between quotes. Like this. Cell expansion is going to be useful because we have um, membrane markers. So we're going to use the membrane marker area. So we're going to uh, artificially define a cytoplasm. And then we want to measure uh, shape to have uh, morphology uh, measurements and also to have intensity measurement especially for um, the definition of a different cell population. So I'm going to run this. All right, so it's running. It's a rather small region, so that should be pretty uh, fast, hopefully. Uh, I installed the GPU version, so it's using my GPU, and as you can see, it's it's okay. Uh, I can, so to evaluate the performance, it's probably be better to uh, just look at the nuclei, and you can do that if you go to view, if you go to cell display, you can choose nuclei only. So we only have uh, the, the outlines of the nuclei, and then so we can, so here I, I used a, a rather a low threshold. So if I find uh, nuclei that don't really make sense, like this one, I can go to the annotation tab and I have all the measurements associated with this nucleus, including uh, the detection probability. Here it says 0 0.36. So maybe, you know, if I think that this is not here, sorry. If it's not a nucleus and doesn't look like a nucleus, I should um, put a threshold on the probability that is higher than this, uh, and probably like this one as well, has a detection probability of 0 0.38. So maybe I can increase it. I can also look at uh, what seems to be the minimum size, sorry. So let's try to find real small nuclei, or at least what I what I would define as the minimum size. So maybe this look. So let me check. This looks real, but I let's say I think this should be the minimum size. Then I can go in the in, in the measurements and look at the area. Nucleus area is actually 5.8. So maybe I can say, okay. I don't want nuclei that have an area inferior to 5. And I want to have a probability threshold. I, I saw that you know, 0 0.37, 0 0.38 was too low. Let's say 0 0.5. And so I'm going to run it again. And I need, so maybe here it's not. Yes, it seems to work. And you know, so here I'm going to go fast because I, I'm going to say, okay, I'm fine with it. But uh, you should spend some time to actually uh, optimize, especially those two parameters. 
but here I'm going to say, okay, um, parameters are optimal. So I'm going to uh, actually remove this. And it asks me if I want to keep the descendant objects. So the descendant objects are the nuclei because uh, I use this annotation to segment nuclei. So nuclei in the hierarchy defined according to QPath, they are in the annotation. So they are descendant objects. Just make sure it asks you if you want to keep them. I don't want to keep them, so I need to say no here. And now I'm going to uh, select my entire tissue. Oops not what I wanted to do, this I wanted to do. And I'm going to run uh, the script on, on, on the entire tissue. And so now I'm going to speed up video so you don't have to wait for the entire processing time. All right, it's done. So as you can see, it was pretty fast. Uh, three minutes and 15 seconds on my computer. So again, I uh, installed the GPU version. Uh, which allows me to uh, run Stardust with the GPU. So it might be a little bit longer if you use your CPU, but still it should be doable and it seems that uh, actually it did a decent job. So we see here we have small, um, small structures that maybe, you know, you might be interested in detecting. So you have, in, if it's the case, then you have to adjust the parameters accordingly. Uh, definitely you are the expert uh, with regards to your images so you need to make sure that you're doing uh, the right decision when you define your parameters so you get a good segmentation.